Hi, what's better today? You're listening to the Leadership Advantage podcast with me, Dr. John Kenworthy, and brought to you by Selsin.com. It's why some leaders thrive and others struggle. Hey there, welcome. This is John, and as we come to the end of another year, it's episode 25 of the Leadership Advantage podcast, and there's not going to be a 26. Well, I don't think there's going to be a 26 this year, because a couple of weeks' time, it's Christmas over the weekend, so I I suspect I'm not going to be doing a, a podcast. I'll probably write a couple of articles and post those up. But... Uh, Every two weeks for this year, I've been doing a podcast, and I hope you've been enjoying them. And it's been, it's amazing. As we come towards the end of another year, I see lots of people like Michael Hyatt, Jeff Coins, and so on, are reinvigorating their marketing process to, to sell you their, their goal-setting programs for the new year. And everybody's looking for some new beginning, for a new way forward. And I'm honest, I'm going to be absolutely no different. Uh, this episode is all about how you realise your dreams. And I'm gonna, let me start with saying I found the true secret to success. It's not a 20-step process. It's not even 10 steps. Hey, it's not even a seven-step journey. It's three steps. Seriously, after all this time and experience, I've actually stumbled across... The true secret to success, and it's a three step process. That's it, just three. And it's not going to be a secret for, for long. But before you go overly excited, it's not a, a shortcut, it's not a silver bullet, it's not a magic pill, but it is a simple three step process. But why are there no shortcuts? Well, recently I was on a holiday in. Uh, Margaret River in Western Australia, and I was enjoying a fantastic walk one day. And it's called the walk is called the Ten Mile Brook, and it's called Ten Mile Brook for a very good reason. It's a ten mile walk to a brook and back. It goes along the Margaret River and it goes to the dam, and you basically turn around and come back again. It's a interesting walk but not completely fascinating and when you get to this reservoir at the end it's a little bit disappointing because this year there's not enough water over the winter and so this spring uh, it was pretty low so it wasn't that pretty but it was a nice walk through the woods and enjoyed the fresh air and one of the things when I go for a walk and when I'm on holidays I'm, I'm not looking for shortcuts. I'm not looking for quicker ways. I'm looking to enjoy the hike, the walk. And as I look back on my life, I finally begin to see a pattern emerging. You see, if you looked at my CV, it's rather rather difficult to make sense of it. People always ask me, rather odd directions my career appears to have taken. And if you already know me, then you certainly know that my first career was as a chef. Well, okay, perhaps the term chef is a little grand for my first real job, which was frying eggs and bacon, peeling potatoes, washing pots and scrubbing floors. I did later train as a commie chef, became a sous chef and eventually became a head chef. I also did my stints behind the bar and waiting in a restaurant and so on. See, whilst I had some abilities in cooking, no one was going to allow me to run a kitchen until I understood what was happening in all parts of the kitchen and to understand my diners, my customers. After a while, I I went to to university to study hotel management because now I wanted more than a kitchen. I loved being front of house as well. I enjoyed running the back of the house too. And my industrial placement, which today would be an Americanized into an internship, exposed me to the delights of housekeeping and cleaning rooms after an Irish stag weekend and many other delightful and disgusting moments. You see, my internship, my industrial release, was in the Isle of Man in a hotel casino. During my time there, I presided over a disastrous lunch 
for three and a half thousand militant unionists at their conference that, due to my lack of leadership, was served lukewarm and two hours late. I used the wrong fire extinguisher on a firefight to the amusement of everyone who did not lose their eyebrows. I even managed to spill soup upon the lap of a kindly royal personage. And if you speak to anyone in the hotel business, they too can regale you with stories of exhaustion, disasters, drunkards and learning. Oh yes, learning. Because there are those who insist that it has to be easier than this. But it's not. See, nowadays I meet a young manager in another industry. They got themselves a degree in business, for example. And they get an associate director title or vice president. It's an entry level position, but it got a fancy name and a pretty fancy salary. They expect to be in a managerial role within a year or two and want to know what they need to know to get there as fast as possible. But it's an expensive shortcut that isn't. Many have embarked on an MBA, a Masters in Business Admin, and having spent a small fortune on their education, want to know why they haven't got to be the senior manager yet. People are signing up for courses that promise instant results, even though they've burnt more, been burnt more than once already. I've fallen victim to this thinking myself on many more occasions than I like to admit. I cast an envious eye on someone else's success and think that if only I can emulate them, I too will have that instant success. Of course, it's nonsense. You know that it's nonsense. You too have found out that there are no shortcuts, or at least, as according to Maya Angelou, there are no shortcuts to any place that's worth going. So now I look back and think, if only I had cut across the meaning meandering path of my career, there are some useful diversions, but many useless ones. And ultimately, had I known that I was coming this way, I could easily have cut across. The trouble is, of course, that we don't know which direction is the real shortcut. See, if I'd known that I would essentially end up teaching, writing and recording audio podcasts, I should really have taken a course in journalism or teaching, or both, just to be sure. But then my godfather did ask me some 40 years ago what I really wanted to do with my life as he watched me scrub the floor of the cafe's kitchen. Then I wanted the shortcut to having a clean floor without actually having to put in any effort. And I wrote the book. See, when I wrote my leadership field guide, What's Better Today, I set out to be different from all the other leadership instant success books out there. I even wrote on the cover as a warning, there are no silver bullets, no quick and easy solutions. It will not happen overnight. And that's the problem. It's very difficult to sell a book that promises not to have instant results. But the truth is there are no instant results. And this is one of the very, very few times I actually agree with the Iron Lady. She said, I do not know anyone who has got to the top without hard work. That is the recipe. It will not always get you to the top, but should get you pretty near. That was Margaret Thatcher. Okay, hurry up already. What are the three steps? I know the world is an impatient place and I know you're keen to find out. So here you go. Success starts with number one, deciding what you want from life. Number two, choosing that you are going to work at it every day. And number three, every day you keep on keeping on. Let me repeat those three steps because I want you to be sure that you're getting it. Number one is deciding what you want from life. Number two is choosing that you are going to work for it every day. 
and number three. And every day you keep on keeping on. See, if you're disappointed, you're not alone. And, of course, if you're young and hungry, the chances are pretty high that you're going to forget this for a while and go seek a much nicer answer and some other magic formula. But that's the thing. This is the magic formula. It's no shortcut. It's no silver bullet. It's not instant. But it is the magic formula. This is George Bernard Shaw said, The people who get on in this world are the people who get up and look for the circumstances they want, and if they can't find them, make them. So what we're looking to do here is decide what you want from life. Choose that you're going to work a bit for every day, and every day keep on keeping on. That is the three-step secret to success. So, may I wish you all the blessings of the season for Hanukkah, for Christmas, for a blessed new year. It's been a pleasure being with you. Do drop me a line. Do write to me. Wish me a happy Christmas. Very happy to hear from you. Tell me what you think about these podcasts over this past year. I'd like your feedback. And I don't mean by that only tell me praise. I mean, I'd like your feedback. If you've read my book, What's Better Today? There's the feedback sandwich in there. I would love to get a feedback sandwich from you about this. Three things that you specifically like. One thing for me to improve. And overall, what you think is going well with the podcast. Please let me have your feedback. I'd really appreciate it. And I've got some special surprises and lots of lovely things lined up uh, in 2016. In the meantime, I've just listened to a podcast by one of my favourite people in all the world. That's Sean D'Souza from Psychotactics.com. I'll put the link to his latest podcast in the show notes on the website at thelsim.com forward slash podcast. Go and uh, have a listen to that as well. I think it's going to make a big difference for you. Enjoy. Be blessed. Bye-bye for now. You've been listening to the Leadership Advantage podcast with me, Dr. John Kenworthy. If you'd like to find out more, visit us at selsim.com. It's why some leaders thrive and others struggle.